Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And we welcome you to Love Alive Ministry. All right, all right. Love Alive, Love Alive. We thank God for Love Alive. So love much love, love alive. We thank God for love alive. So much love is inside. We thank God for love alive. Love alive, love alive. We thank God for love alive. Love alive, love alive. We thank God for love alive. So much love is inside. We thank God for love alive. Amen. And our church scripture comes from what? James, James chapter, chapter 1, verse, verse 22. 22. And it is, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Amen. Amen. We'll have scripture by Brother Daniel and prayer by Digging Chris. Amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, church. The Lord. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. I will be reading from the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 2. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the day of Herod, the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have, for we have seen his star in the east, and are now come to worship him. Amen. 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 Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art smiling, do of our lambs. Yes. Lord, thank you for our right minds, Heavenly mm, Father. Yes, thank you for just loving us, Heavenly Father. Thank you for waking us up to see another day, Heavenly Father, and forgive us for our sins, Heavenly Father. Just thank you for loving us, loving us the way we do, Heavenly Father. Yes. We don't always deserve it, but you've never changed as far as loving us, Heavenly Father. Thank you, thank you for the word that we're going to receive, Heavenly mm -hmm. Father. Thank you so much, Lord. You, Lord, Father God, that you give so much to us mm -hmm. and for us, Heavenly Father, and you all, you never look down on us, Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. as as nothing, because you, you made us, Heavenly Father, so thank you. Thank you Can't thank you enough, Heavenly mm -hmm. Father, and thank you for the people that's coming on their way. Yes. Lord, bless the homeless, mm -hmm. Lord. Give them shelter, mm -hmm. yes. Heavenly Father. Bless, just bless them, give them a Give them something to eat, Heavenly mm -hmm. Father. Yes. Bless the bus drivers. Mm -hmm. Watch them over them, Heavenly Father. Move things out their way. Make them have their mind to stay focused on the road. Yes. Drive for them, Heavenly Father. Bless mm -hmm. the teachers, Heavenly yes. Father, mm -hmm. as they teach. Mm -hmm. Bless the students they want to learn, Heavenly mm -hmm. Father. Feed them. Please. Lord, just thank you so much for what you thank give you. us, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that 
that Jesus Christ was born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent a salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ was born. Everybody ought to go, go tell it on the mountain, on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. That Jesus Christ was born, everybody ought to go tell it on the mountain, mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ was born. Hark the herald angels sing, Jesus the light of the world. Glory to the newborn King, Jesus, the light of the world. We'll walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Joyful all ye nations rise, Jesus, the light of the world. Join the triumph of the skies, Jesus, the light of the world. We walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Hail the heaven, Prince of Peace. Jesus, the light of the world. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Jesus, the light of the world. We Walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. <clears throat> Who do you call the wonderful counselor? Oh, glory, hallelujah. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah to the newborn king. I call Jesus a wonderful counselor. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah to the newborn king. I call Jesus a prince of peace. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, to the newborn king. 
I call Jesus the mind regulator. Oh, 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 oh. glory, hallelujah. Oh, 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 glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah to the newborn king. I call Jesus a doctor in the sick room. Oh, 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 oh. glory, hallelujah. Oh, 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 glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, to the newborn king. I call Jesus a heart fixer. Oh, 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 glory, hallelujah. Oh, 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 glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, to the newborn king. I call Jesus my all in all. Oh, oh, oh glory, hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Glory, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah to the newborn king. Oh, who do you call the wonderful counselor? Oh, oh, oh. glory, hallelujah. Oh, 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 glory, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah to the newborn king. Wonderful counselor. Amen. 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 God bless you. At this time, we're going to greet one another. Amen. Pull out your phones. Greet somebody that's not here. Greet somebody that is here. God bless you. Greet one another. Hallelujah.
Amen. Thank you for sharing your love with someone. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. All right. Today is a big day. Amen. Because it is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Every day with the Lord is a big day. Amen. Amen. At this time, it's offering time. Amen. You can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. Bless the Lord. Be a blessing. Our baskets are to my left. Electronically, we have Cash App, Give Life. We have our website. Come on and join us and give and help build up the kingdom. God bless you. It's tithes and offering time. God bless you. us to wake up this morning and to come out to hear the word and to worship. Thank you, O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, for the offering that we hear. Let it be used for the upkeep of your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. As the men are preparing to come for an A selection, amen. I want to let you know that we have all of the items for the Christmas baskets, and we have all of the items, I believe, for the senior home basket. Amen. Everything is accounted for. We just need to bring it all in. God bless you. God bless you. The men will be coming with an A selection, and then we'll be hearing the preach word. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Open up your Bible to the New Testament. Amen. We're going to look at the gospel book written by John. Amen. Oh, well. John chapter 4. chapter 4, verses 24 through 26. Amen. John chapter 4, verses 24 through 26. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Amen. 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 Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Chapter 4, verses 24 through 26. And it reads, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah is cometh, which is called Christ. When he come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come before you just to say thank you. We thank you for your word. Now, Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit preaches mightily that this word may be applied to all. Father, we thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for what you are doing. And we thank you for sending your son back again to get us. It is in his mighty name. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit indwelling with us that we pray at this time. And we say Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to get Sister Jessica's help here for a minute. It's good to have a help meet, Brother Daniel. <laughs> Ain't that right, Dick and Chris? Good to have a help me. Amen. And for a topic, oh, that's an inside joke. I'm sorry. For a topic, we're going to use, who is that man? Who is that man? Amen. Here we have Jesus at the well with the Samaritan woman. Amen. And what he's really doing is he's setting us up for the future that the word can be spread to everybody, anybody, anywhere, anytime. And while he's talking to that woman, she's listening intently. She's being honest as much as she can, but she doesn't really understand what Jesus is saying to her. So she says, when the Messiah comes, he will explain all of this to us all. And Jesus said to her, I am the Messiah. I am am that man. Amen? But I can imagine as we sit here, you may say, I do know Jesus Christ as the Messiah. I've heard about that man. Amen? But what did Jesus do for us? What did he do for us? Well, see, Jesus was sent by the Father to redeem us redeem us. He brought us out of that sin marketplace, okay? He paid our debt that we couldn't pay, okay? See, we had a debt that we had built up and it was great and there was no way that we could pay it. Romans 6.23, amen? And the debt was a death sentence. 
because all unrighteousness, which is sin, is death. And we couldn't clean that sin up. We just couldn't pay it. So Jesus paid that debt. He set us free that we wouldn't have to behold to that sin debt anymore. The penalty of sin is no longer our curse. We are free to live righteousness just as he is. See, we were born slaves to sin, but he freed us. He freed us. Amen. He freed us. He allowed us to be regenerated. Now, what regenerated means is he allowed us to start over again. Amen. Brother Cameron, you feel up to work in the day or are you tired? You look a little tired. You don't feel like working today. I'm going to let you rest then. Amen. Let, let, let me tell you what the Lord did for us. What he did was he took the coat that I have that Cameron was trying to wear that would not fit him that was filled with sin that he was trying to fill up. And he took that coat off of him and put the coat on Cameron that fits him well fitting so that he could live righteously. Amen? That's what he did for us. Now, the problem is we tend to want to put back on this sinful coat. Amen? After he took it off and put one on that fits better. But I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us up together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Amen? Ephesians 2, 4, and 5. So he came not for us to get ourselves together. He came to get us together. Amen? But I know what you're saying. But what has he done? Y'all like Janet Jackson. What has he done lately? See, I really don't understand why he had to die if he was God. Well, see, God is just. He's got to honor his word. So when he said that sin has a wage of death, the debt had to be paid. So, he sent his son to pay the debt. And it is by our faith in Jesus Christ that we are justified and accepted. Our faith, what we believe. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah? He was sent by the Father. He is the begotten son. Brought into being to pay your debt. The debt has been paid. It's been paid. Not only has the debt been paid, do you believe? Do you accept that it's been paid? Now, it's amazing. If you owe a bill to Verizon or whatever phone card you have, if they told you the debt was paid, you wouldn't stand there and say, are you sure? Are you sure? Y'all be like, thank you, I'm gone. My debt's paid, I'm out of here. Amen? But it's with the Christ, we go back and say, are you sure? When he is the real thing. He is the real one. He has paid the debt again that we could not pay. Not only did he pay the debt, he set us up to be adopted. Adopted by the Father. Come on home. Some of us don't have a choice, but some of us have been adopted, meaning somebody chose you. That's a lot of love. Amen? We're all born into certain families, but isn't it good to know you have to be born again and the Father adopts you into his family because he loves you? And because he loves you, he said, I'm going to unite you with Christ. I'm not going to use the word married. I'm going to say united with Christ. 
Now, what does it mean to be united with Christ? It means everything that he is, I am. Not going to become, but I am. Everything he went through, I'm going to go through. He was crucified. Guess what? I got to be crucified. He died. Guess what? I have to die too. He was buried. Guess what? I was buried too. Amen. He was raised up with me. He brought me up when he got up. Amen. To a new life. If he suffered, guess what? I suffer with him, and I got to suffer. But when he's glorified, guess what? I'm glorified with him, amen? I'm joint heirs with him. What did Jesus do for me? Everything. Everything. Everything is what he did for me. Dead is a past tense word. Amen? So I already got it. He's just waiting on me to realize what I already got. Amen? All right, so you can accept what Jesus did for you, but I know the next question you're asking, why life got to be so hard? Why does life have to be so hard well we just forgot some important keys that the Lord gave us here's the most important one salvation is a gift it's free sanctification cost a lifetime what does that mean that means that you're going to spend a lifetime working out being holy and being righteous. A lifetime. It costs, y'all. There is a cost to be holy. It costs to be righteous. Amen? But it's not a cost that you cannot pay. When you're born again, everything that the Lord gives you is something that you can achieve. Believe it. Believe it. So we say, but still, okay, why is life so hard? Well, part of the issue is we forgot our position in Christ. We did. We did. And we live by our practical experiences. Y'all know what those practical experiences. Well, they said, somebody told me, well, this is what seems to happen. Those are our practical experiences. But we got to remember where we've been placed in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, Jesus, who knew no sin, he's righteous, that we might be made the righteousness of God to him. Jesus took our sin, washed us up. Now, listen what God did for us, because it's got to be a reciprocal. If he took from us, you know what God gave us? He gave us Jesus' righteousness. When? When we accepted him. When we accepted him, we were clean and we were righteous. Why? Because it was imputed unto us. That means it was transferred from Jesus to us, his righteousness, righteousness. And everything that Jesus is, you are. Not you are becoming, I said you are. This is the way the Father sees you. He knows our past, our present, our future. The Father sees you just like 
Jesus. That's why we can understand Romans 8 now, that there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The Father sees you as a perfect product, finished, completed. So if he sees me like that, how do I see myself? Amen? Let me tell you how you see yourself. You see yourself based on what others have told you in your experiences. Amen? We look at our past, we look at our present, and we quickly say we have room to improve in this walk because the world is attacking us all sides the world is attacking us and we do have room to improve amen but we gotta know where we sit we are positioned in Christ and no one can change our position in Christ so no matter what you feel you have to know what it is what it is, is that the Father said, you are perfect. You are righteous. You are holy. And you said, but wait a minute, I sinned. I did this. He said, I know, but that's why my son's blood will wash you up and regenerate you. Clean up that nice coat. Put it back on you. Put that robe back on you because you are who I said you are. Will you believe it? Will you accept it? Will you say, I am positioned in Christ and I am marvelously and wonderfully made? Did you know that Jesus prayed for you all? Did you know that? Not only did he pray for his disciples, he also prayed for you. And did you know that he overcame the world? Now listen to what he prayed. He said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which, you, which thou hast given me, for they are thine. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them. Separate them. Make them holy through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. You know what he's saying there? You, you got to live in the world. You're going to have some problems. But don't worry about it. I already prayed for you. Be of good cheer. You overcoming those, you just got to go through some things. Amen. So you really can't have a testimony until you have a test. You got to have a test to have a testimony. Amen. And unlike us, he's the good father, so he knows when we're not passing the test. So he says, all right, we got to study a little bit more, and I'm going to test you again. We can't fake him out. Because he knows, already knows. So I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, how do we make this life easier then? If I know who he is, I know what he has done, and I know my life does not have to be so hard, how do I make it easier? Well, we got to get in shape. We got to get in shape. We have to get spiritually fit. You know, it's pretty easy for us to say we got to get physically fit and we can relate to that. But did you know you got to get spiritually fit? How do you get spiritually fit? The same way you get physically fit. There are going to be some things that you need to stop doing. And there's going to be some things that you need to start doing. Amen? 
So how do I get spiritually fit? Well, I got to watch some of that stuff I'm watching on TV, on the media, through the internet. Amen. Have you noticed how just about every show out there will have something on it that you don't agree with? Your spirit is like, hey, that's not right. I can't believe they put that on TV. Every show, every internet you can go to where you're watching or streaming, there's some elements of it that are not righteous. Amen? Even when the shows seem pretty good, they'll twist something in there. Maybe there could even be a commercial that comes on. Amen? Have you seen some of the commercials? Oh, my Lord Jesus, help us. We got to watch what we are seeing through the media. You know what else we got to work on? We got to be careful of the relationships that we have established and that we try to build on. Some of our relationships are cancerous. They've come to kill us, and we only keep them because it's the only relationship we know. But we don't have to just stay there. Some relationships you need to just let go. Now, here's the problem with some relationships that we're having trouble with ending. We don't really want to end them. Not really. Not deep down in our heart. So we're holding on to them. We might say, no, I don't want that anymore. That's not for me. But deep down in my heart, I'm holding on to it. And we might even say, I don't know why I'm holding on to this relationship that is no good for me. And it becomes, well, I know that mud that I'm in, but I don't know what's over there. So maybe I'll just stay in this mud and this dirt. No, you can get out of that relationship. Amen. And did you know, really, you don't know how to have a relationship until you develop one with Christ? I, I marvel at people who, who say I'm building a relationship and don't have a relationship with Christ. I'm like, man, that's got to be tough. How do you do it? Because after all, you don't even like yourself. So how are you building a relationship with somebody else? Oh, no, you got to build a relationship with Christ. You can build it with somebody else, but it's on some falseness. It's based on that mask that we put on. Amen? And then they get upset when our mask comes off and they see us in full effect. But we were hiding for a long time. We just couldn't keep that mask on. Amen? We got to get rid of some of our attitudes. Be careful about your attitudes. How many people say, I can't do that. That's not for me. I don't know. I don't know how to do that. I just can't. I'll never be able to. I'm not that smart. I don't have this. If I didn't have all of that and I didn't know all of that, I certainly wouldn't be telling everybody and putting it out in the atmosphere. While I might feel bad, I'm going to say, I need some help. But I'm not going to talk down to myself. Why would I do that when I got so many others that will do that for me? They don't need my help, amen? They'll talk bad about me. I don't have to talk bad about me. They'll do it behind my back, in my face, when I'm asleep, when I'm awake. They don't need my help for that. There are plenty of people that would do that. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get on the other side, which I'm going to speak positively, that no matter what is going on in my life, I'm going to hold on to, wait a minute, I'm positioned in Christ. And if I'm positioned in Christ, I got to win. I have to win. I have to overcome. Why? Because he said it. And if he said it, it's got to be true. So I'm going to overcome. Come. Now, what do we need to do? We need to worship him. I didn't say praise him. I said worship him. And we need to do that individually and corporately. Amen? Individually means when I'm by myself and nobody else is around, I can still worship him. 
when I'm in a group of people, I can still worship him. Because after all, he hasn't changed. No matter where I am, so I need to worship him. But in order to worship him, which is great, which is an acknowledgement of who he is, I need to grow. How do you grow? How do you grow? How do you grow physically? You got to eat. That's how you grow. But you got to eat the right food to grow. Amen? So if I'm trying to grow spiritually, I've got to eat the word. The word is my food. Amen? I got to become 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. I got to become that, right? I got to study. I got to do it. I got to eat. How else will you discover your gift if you don't eat? When people say, oh, I don't know what the Lord put me here to do. Well, have you been reading? You've been studying? Keep studying. It's in the word. It's in the word what he wants from me. Oh, the revelation is there. You just need to dig and eat. And what's the last thing we need to do to stay physically, spiritually fit? We got to work out. We got to work out. Diet, exercise, right? I'm praying. I already acknowledge that. I'm doing that first. I'm in worship. Amen. Now I got to work out. And how do you work out spiritually? You work out spiritually by performing the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 19, and 20. You got to go and tell all nations about the Savior. You got to tell the dying world, right? That's how you work out spiritually. But you can't work out spiritually until you make sure that you've prayed, you worshiped, you acknowledged him, you eat the right food, then you're ready to work out. Do you know if you try to work out without eating, you will pass out? Amen? So you got to eat properly before you go to your workout. Amen? Who is that man? He's the Savior. He's the Christ. He loveth you before you loved yourself. He came for you while you were not ready. So you don't have the opportunity to say, I just got to get myself together. No, you make him a lie. He said, I came to get you together because you could not get yourself together. All I need you to do is just believe that I am that I am and come unto Jesus right now and live, live, live. I know what you're saying. How can I be different and yet when I look in the mirror, I look the same? Because it's where you've been positioned. You've been positioned in Christ. Your position will never change. You have been honestly positioned. Now, I got to tell you something. If you were not honestly positioned and you tried to fool him, you didn't fool him. You're fooling yourself. You're pretending to be saved when you're not saved. And if you're pretending to be saved, you pretend to be blessed when you're not blessed. You pretend to be his when you are not his. You've got to really, really, really believe with your heart. You've got to have faith when nobody else around you have faith. See, it's a personal relationship. That's why we say you need to come together with like-minded folks that are walking down the same path instead of hanging out with folks that are not walking down the same path. 
you've got to come to him and realize that no matter what comes, no matter what happens, if I'm positioned in him, that will not change. So I'm a complete product. I'm perfect in every way. I'm just working out my sanctification. I'm working out my righteousness. He said I'm righteous. He said I made you righteous. I made you holy. I'm just learning to live. That's all. I'm just learning to live. So if you started out saying, hey, and you even heard me preaching, you're still saying, hey, I don't know that man. Well, here's the good news. You can get to know him. It's free. It don't cost you nothing to get to know Jesus. Amen? No, no, you can get to know him. He came for you. For you. You're not bad enough. He came for you. It is his goal that no one would be lost. But you got to accept him. You've got to make up in your mind that you want to be better. You want to do something different. You want to follow him. You want to be positioned and accept his way and his will. Now listen to this. If the father did not think it robbery for the son to die for our redemption and to pay the wage for our sin, which is death. Do you know that there are some things that after you accept Christ that you've done before you accepted Christ that you're going to have to pay for? I'm saying that because too often we tell people that when they accept Christ, everything is good. But I want you to know that everything is good, but it doesn't mean that you're not going to have to pay for some of the things that you did in your past. The difference is that you won't be alone when you're paying that price. And because he loves us so much, we can cry mercy and his grace will come to us and is all sufficient. So if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, why don't you come right now? Now is the time. This is when we say the doors of the church are open. Now is the time for you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Why now? Because it's being offered now. Amen. All you got to do is just come on down the aisle. Amen. And when you come, we'll have somebody up here waiting for you to minister to you, to answer more questions, but most of all to say, welcome home. Welcome back into the body of Christ. Welcome back to your regeneration. Happy to greet you. Amen? Now is the time. If you are watching online and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can do so right now. It's really simple. It is. You just need to admit that, you know, I didn't know about sin, but if it's all unrighteousness, I've sinned. I'm a sinner, and I don't want to remain a sinner. Father, you sent your son for me. I accept him as my personal Savior and Lord. I will turn from my wicked ways and follow him. If you do that, you too can be saved. The Bible tells us whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord, doesn't matter what race you are, doesn't matter how much money you have, it doesn't matter where you live. It says whosoever, you shall be saved. So you just need to call upon him right now. It does not matter your age. I always say it's better to do it when you're younger, amen? You got less distractions. But no matter what age you are, you can call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Even in your last years, you can still call upon the name of the Lord. It is a trick of Satan to tell you, you spent all these years doing things the wrong way and you never called upon the name of the Lord. Why are you doing it now? Because I'm not going to continue in that manner. I'm going to stop. It's time for a change. Call upon the name of the Lord. 
and you'll be saved instantly. You'll be placed in position. And as long as you believe and you have faith, he'll be working behind the scenes with you. Amen? All you need to do is just come. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Amen. 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 Y'all can come over here to my left. The Diggins are going to come up and minister to you. Come on over to my left. Sister Kim and Brother Jeremiah, come on over this way. Oh, okay. He got excited. Amen. He was like, y'all left me. What's up with that? Amen. 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 Y'all come on over this way. The diggers are going to minister to you. Amen. What a great day. What a great day. Hallelujah. Do you know what's happening in heaven right now? The angels are rejoicing. Amen. Why? Because somebody else has come home. Thank you, Jesus. What the season. What a day. What a day. Can it get any better than this? God is true. He has not failed. He will not fail. He cannot lie. So if he promised it, it's got to come to pass. Amen? So we accept it. Amen. As they're ministering to the family, we're going to pray. Father, we come before you to say thank you. We thank you for the son. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for your word. We thank you for who you have already made us. And we're glad that you see us in a way that we don't see ourselves. But help us to take upon the eyes that you have so that we can see ourselves the way that you see us and live and live. We thank you, Father, for Jesus Christ. We thank you for allowing him to be born. We thank you for allowing him to pay the ransom. We thank you for him being the substitute. We thank you for his blood, for his blood continues to petition on our behalf. But most of all, we thank you for getting him up out that grave with all power in his hand and for allowing him to ascend into the heavens and to let us know that as he ascended, one day he's coming back again. But Father, until he comes back, help us to work out. Help us to continue to work out. Help us to continue to call the dying world back to you. We thank you for all things. Forgive us, Father, for we've fallen short. We thank you for repentance. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for the opportunity to be better for you. Now, Father, we ask that you continue to bless us to be a blessing. Bless the sick and shut in. Bless homeless all over the world. Bless the needy. Bless those who was hungry. Somebody went to bed hungry. Bless those who've been abused, Father. Bless them right now. Protect them. Hide them. Father, we know some of the worst abuse is not physical but it's mental. Hold the minds, hold the hearts. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for making us complete in you. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Help us to always listen to the Holy Spirit. Submit. Help us to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. Let us know that you loved us so much that you didn't want to be apart from us. So you gave us the Holy Spirit to rest, rule, and abide with us. Let us submit to the Holy Spirit that he may rule with us. We thank you, Father, for all things it is. In Jesus' name we pray. And now may the grace and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us forever. Let the church say amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Diggins, you can keep going. God bless you. Amen.